I'm going to give you some just kind of off the cuff interview tips that are going to help you as a developer to pass your next programming interview. And I'm going to approach this from a very soft skills standpoint. Okay. A lot of videos you can see on YouTube, a lot of tutorials you can learn about how to pass a programming interview, focus really on the code and the technical aspect of it, but that's not what gets you the job. Okay. It, it might be surprising to you, but what gets you the job is really demonstrating the value that you have, uh, which is more than just your technical ability. And as an employer myself, someone who hires people all the time uh, to do various jobs for me, you know, I know exactly what I'm looking for now and I can tell you what most employers are looking for in an interview. If you guys are just joining me for the first time, I'm John from simpleprogrammer.com. On this channel, I teach you the soft skills that you need to know to become a successful developer, to make more money, to uh, live a better life, and to just all around be a better person. And, uh, you know, we really focus on personal development type of skills here, which a lot of software developers are sorely lacking. Uh, I'll teach you all those things because I, I used to be the, the nerdy, shy developer who couldn't communicate. And uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I learned from that and, and it, it changed my life. It changed my career. It uh, ended up making me a lot of money and, and made me a lot more successful. So click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Click the bell so you get notifications when the new videos come out and make sure you watch or you get a copy of the Complete Software Developer Career Guide if you haven't already. Uh, again, this is my best-selling book on software development for all levels of software developers. It's number one ranked on Amazon in uh, pretty much all the software development categories, at least the, the Kindle version. All right, so let, let's break it down, okay? The reason to hire someone is because you need a job done in order to make more money in your business, okay? We gotta look at the bottom line here. But the reason why they're interviewing you is to figure out if you are the person who can best provide more value then as an organization or company, or even as a hiring manager, it costs them. So your job at an interview is to convey that value. It's, it's all about what you can do for them, not about what they can do for you. So many developers, they approach an interview basically trying to demonstrate why they deserve the job. <laughs> which is not the right way. No one cares about you. No one cares about you making money or getting a good job or you finding a happy place where you can program. Okay, what they do care about is, is two things. One, money, the bottom line, right? How are you gonna make money for me as an entrepreneur? That's what I care about when I'm hiring you. And the second is like, how are you gonna function on the team? How are you going to behave? How much management am I going to have to do, right? Are you going to be able to get the job done? Are you going to be able to do what I need you to do with minimal supervision? I don't want to babysit you. I want to be able to pay you and to know that the job is, is going to get done. So when you come into an interview, you need to really reset everything you, you know about interviewing and come in with that mind frame. Okay. You need to think about that. So how does this translate in the real world? Well, it translates before the interview process, okay? So one of the things that you should do, if you haven't already, is create a blog. I've got a free tutorial on that, a free email course. You can sign up down below. We'll try to put a link in the cards as well that, that tells you how to create a blog. That was one of the things that made me extremely successful as a developer. And the reason why I say this, and it could be a YouTube channel, okay? It could be a podcast, right? But you need something out there that indicates that you are an authority in this area before you actually go into the interview, okay? And you can have multiple touch points here, okay? I create a whole course on how to market yourself as a software developer. You can check out that in the link below as well. And that teaches you how to build a brand, how to build that personal brand and to market yourself and to make it so that you're sort of creating this persuasion technique that is going to influence people before they even interview you. Because I'll tell you something, all right? When I'm interviewing someone, you better bet the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Google their name. The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Google their email address, okay? And I'm gonna look up their social media. I'm gonna look up everything I can find about them. And when I Google someone's name and like their blog comes up or their YouTube channel or the book that they wrote comes up, okay, I've already been persuaded to find reasons why this person is good for the job as opposed to the opposite, right? And that's what you wanna do. You wanna set up that persuasion. Now you can do this in a variety of different ways. The best way is to create a platform to, to build an audience, to, to market yourself, to build your own personal brand. But you can also do this by getting some contact points with the interviewer ahead of time. Right. Sometimes you can send an email and maybe even a video email and you can introduce yourself a little bit or you might even be able to do a pre-interview. Right. I've done this before where 
I've jumped on a call with someone said, Hey, just five minutes. All right. I just want to pick your brain for a minute as I'm preparing for the interview. I want to present my best self, right? Cause I, I want to do a good job for you guys. And I take this, this seriously, you know, so you know, you're, you're trying to build some kind of rapport, right? Again, that's not going to work all the time. There's HR, there's, there's a lot of things, but think about what you can do in order to persuade on the interview. Okay. Like I said, you know, I can't give you every single solution here, but think about this. How can I make it so that the interview already knows who I am or has some kind of connection with me ahead of time? Okay. There's a lot of ways that you can do this, but think about that. Along with that, when you go into the interview, if you're doing an in-person interview, dress to the nines. Impressions are important. If you come in dressed to the nines, wearing a suit and tie, and you look like a million dollars, they're going to treat you more like a million dollars. They're going to feel like you have value. Okay. We, we cannot control this as human beings is we are very, let's say, uh, stereotypical. We use our stereotype, right? We make snap judgments about people and it's based on appearance. Okay. And so you want to use this to your advantage, right? I know a lot of people have differing advice on this, but I'm telling you that regardless of what people say, the truth is that how you look is going to determine how people perceive you. And they're going to have a persuasion. It's going to be another persuasion to position yourself in a, in a good position. Okay. Now this is all just before you do the interview. Now, when you get into the interview, okay, on time is 10 minutes early. First of all, you should know that. All right. If you don't know that by now, uh, drill that into your head. Uh, and so if you have traffic, that means that you're showing up 30 minutes early and you're sitting in your car for 20 minutes. Okay. And preparing next, when you get into the interview, it's really important that you keep in your mind that you are going to demonstrate value to them. Okay. You're going to have some programming questions perhaps, and obviously you need to solve those. But the primary thing that a lot of companies are doing when they're interviewing you with these programming questions is they're seeing how you handle solving problems. I mean, there's some competency. Obviously you have to be competent and qualified for the job. M most of the time you are though, right? Most of the time it's, that's not the factor. Okay. I'm assuming that you have that competency. If you don't, then obviously you need to study and prepare. And you should have done that ahead of time to know, you know, when you're going into a job, you should know exactly what they're likely to ask you, what kind of skills and technology that the job entails. And again, you can ask this ahead of time so that you know, so you can prepare for the interview. So you should have those skills. So that shouldn't be a problem. You should have that down cold. Uh, I can give you a resource for that interview cake. I've got a, a link down below that you can, you can sign up for their course and it, it's really good. It will, will help you to develop those, those programming skills that you need to solve those kind of tricky coding problems. Okay. But we're not going to, we're not going to highlight that here. Okay. I'm assuming that you've got that part down. So what I want you to do is I want you to go in there again with that mindset of I am going to demonstrate the value that I can provide to you. I'm not trying to pass some tests. I'm not trying to jump through some hoops. Okay. Instead, you're kind of controlling the frame of the interview. All right. And, and when an interviewer asks you a question, think of it in terms of the value that you're, you're providing them, not trying to impress them or not trying to show that you have this knowledge. Again, you're not trying to jump through hoops. What you're trying to do is you're trying to convey that you're valuable and that you can help them with their problems. Right. So every time they're asking you a question, reframe that in your mind as them trying to figure out whether you can solve their problem, see what the underlying thing is. And it's not going to apply to every single question. You know, if they're asking you a technical question, it, it, that might not be the case, but a lot of the questions are going to be non-technical in nature and even the technical questions, right? So let's say that you're in an interview and the interviewer asks you if you know what polymorphism is. Okay. Don't say yes. <laughs> and don't just give a one line answer, a textbook answer, what polymorphism is, right? Talk about it. Talk about your experience using it. Talk about how that it's, it's valuable as a, as a technique in your tool belt, how they can benefit from your knowledge of it. And in fact, you might ask some questions like, you know, what, what do you, you, do you use polymorphism a lot in your code base? Do you find a lot of developers that are working in your organization don't have a good grasp of it? I, I want to understand a little bit more about why you're asking about polymorphism because it's, it's a good question, right? And again, sometimes this is not going to work. Sometimes the interviewer is going to like look at you funny, but a lot of times you, they're going to, they're going to give you a good answer. And, and what it's, what's happening is then you're steering the interview a little bit. Okay. You're, you're kind of steering the conversation so you can highlight your benefits that you can provide to them. And so let, let's say that they, they respond and they say, oh yeah, yeah. You know, I was just working on this problem. That's why I'm asking this question. And we, we actually do use a lot of polymorphism. Now you can expand upon that. Now you can say, Hey, look, yeah, I totally get that. This is how I solved these problems in the past. And you can really show them 
that you've got some value to demonstrate in that area. Okay. Next, all right. When you are asked questions, all right, and you don't know the answer to the question, be someone who you would want to have on your team. Okay. Reacting that same way. Okay. Don't just say you don't know the answer. Don't lie. Don't BS the answer. Instead, give your best approximation of the answer and then ask some clarifying questions and, and ask them for an explanation because you want to expand your knowledge. Say, okay, you know, this is kind of my best, my best shot at this. And I'll, I'll tell you what I think, but I am really curious to hear what the, what the actual answer is because I'm a person who likes to learn and, and to develop myself. And I, I want to know, you know, so I can improve, uh, uh, you know, and, 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 and then relate it to how you work say, you know, in, in my work, like when I'm, when I'm working, you know, I, I, I often encounter things I don't know. I don't know everything about software development, but what I do is I, I try to research it, learn from coworkers if I can, and then even teach what I learn to other developers on my team. And so it's a really important part of how I, I work as a developer and, and something that I would bring to your team, honestly. And I think it's, it's, it's valuable when you agree. <laughs> Okay, right? You see what I'm doing with, with, with kind of those answers there. Again, I'm steering the conversation a little bit. I'm, I'm creating this, this frame uh, and I'm presenting things in a way that are going to be positive rather than negative. All right. Uh, so, so that's really, you know, some of the, the key things there. Uh, like, like I said, if you don't know the answer to a question, uh, that's where a lot of developers mess up and they, and they think that they've messed up the interview. That's, that's not necessarily the case. If you've pre-framed the interview and you've pre-suaded them with some of the things I've said, they're going to be rooting for you to win. Okay, They're going to want to find reasons why to hire you. In fact, I'll tell you a little story here. I had a guy that I was interviewing for a position, Okay, and the guy really was not very experienced. He couldn't answer a lot of the problems. But man, this guy, he used some persuasion, right? He contacted me before the interview. And when I talked to him on the interview, he just seemed like such a good guy and seemed like a, a person who really just wanted to learn as much as he could. And I knew, I knew that if I gave him a task, he would be able to figure it out. He would go and learn it and he would go and, and get it. And so even though he bombed some of the interview questions and there were other people who were way more technically competent, I ended up recommending him for hire and we ended up hiring this guy and he turned out to be just a great hire because I could see through that. So that kind of brings us to the last point that I'm going to mention here. And there's, there's some more, but you know, if you want to see more of these, there's two things to do. Uh, leave a, a like on the video and comment down below and let me know and, and any questions you have. But you know, the last part of this is, 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 is displaying the, the ability, the willingness to get work done without having to be asked, right? So what I mean by this is that it's this base level of competency, right? You want to demonstrate in the interview always this idea that you, given a task, whether you know how to do the task or not, will figure out what you need to know in order to do it, how it needs to get done, and that you'll do it without supervision, without having to be micromanaged, that you're the kind of person that it doesn't matter what they throw your way, you're going to figure it out, you're going to solve the problem, and, and you're going to get it done, right? That That's the the kind of person that you always want to hire. I, I, I tell you, you know, I promise you that regardless of, of skill level, if I find a person like that, that, that's super resourceful, that will figure out shit and get, get the shit done, that's the person I'm going to hire. Okay. And, and that's how most interviewers are going to work. It's not, not always, you know, some interviewers are not going to understand this concept, but especially if you're interviewing at a entrepreneurial type of company, especially if you're interviewing with a founder or something like that, someone who directly is affected by the bottom line or someone who really understands, uh, you know, a, a good company, like someone you, you'd want to work for, that's primarily what they're going to be looking for. They're going to be look for people who can get shit done. Okay. And so how do you demonstrate that? You demonstrate that by examples, okay? And by being very clear that when you answer questions that you will find out the answer to a thing and you can solve the problem, right? You, you wanna really highlight that in the interview when they're asking you questions. And don't be afraid to, again, like I said, to steer questions in directions that you want, right? You can ask questions in the interview. Right. It's not just a just you don't want to be just someone jumping through hoops. OK, think of yourself as a salesman. All right. If a salesman who's good, OK, comes to my doors, if they're trying to sell me something, I am going to be trying to grill them on, let's say, their vacuum cleaner and ask them all these questions. And they are going to sidestep some of those questions. They'll answer the question. But if they're a skilled salesman, what they're going to do is they're going to sidestep a little bit and they're going to start asking me questions of what I'm looking for. They're going to stop me from asking them questions, trying to filter them out and find out what's wrong. OK, instead, they're going to try and, and, and steer the conversation towards 
what is the problem that you have? And what would a solution to that problem look like for you? And then they're gonna show me that they have the solution to the problem and that if they buy my product, that I'm gonna solve their problem, okay? Because I think I have a different problem than what I really have, right? That I'm asking questions that are irrelevant, right? That's, that's how they're gonna view things. It's the same thing with an interview. Most people aren't experienced interviewers. They don't know how to interview. So you have to kind of say, okay, I want to start turning this interview a little bit around to, to figure out what is the problem that they're trying to solve? Why are they hiring someone for this job? What, what do they expect from this person? What do they really want to get out of this? Okay. And then show them that you're the guy that can do that. Okay. So, all right, guys, uh, make sure you watch some more videos on this channel. If you liked this advice, there's a, a ton of content that I have. I uh, relate to all these things. You know, I could talk about it all day. If you want more interview questions, uh, you know, or how to inter handle interviews, uh, let me know. Click the subscribe button, pick up the book if you haven't already. And like I said, if you want to build your blog and whatnot, there's a resource there for uh, the blogging course that's free. If you want to build your brand, there's a resource there for how to market yourself as a software developer. And I will talk to you next time.